So we've spent this time setting ourselves up, and it is a bit annoying, and we will have to do something like this every time we come in. We're not going to create a site from scratch every time, but we're going to work on a project, and then we're going to save it and take it with us. Next time we have to set ourselves up again. We have to create the database again, but then we'll bring the site back to life, and it will have everything ready for us. But that's the nature of this classroom with deep freeze. We have to do some things over. When you're doing this on your own computer, if you do this on your own computer, you won't need to do a lot of this over and over. You just go back to your web browser, localhost slash WordPress slash WP admin, and your site is there. Also making sure that you've got WAMP running. When you turn your computer on and off, WAMP might turn off. It might not always be running. If you try to go back to localhost and it says not found, check, is your WAMP server running? Do you see the green W? If you don't see the green W, then none of this will work. You just launch WAMP server again, or MAMP, and then you're back in business. So if you've never used WordPress before, let's look at some basic things here. If you have used WordPress, again, the first couple of class meetings might be very slow for you, but definitely we're going to pick up speed. We've got this, which is known as the WordPress dashboard. One of the first things I want to show you is getting used to the two aspects the two faces of WordPress. We've got here the dashboard, also known as the back end, also known as the control panel. This is where I log in as an administrator to add products, to check my sales, to do all of that administrator stuff. The dashboard. I want to look at my site as a visitor, as a user. How does someone see my site when they visit my site? So we need to get used to switching back and forth between the admin screen and the user screen, the back end and the front end, the control panel and the website. The way we do that, several ways, we could do it like this. Do you see at the very top left corner the name of your website? Mine's Victor's Bakery. Yours could be whatever. But if you hover over the name of your site, you should say Visit Site. Click Visit Site. And this is now the front end. This is what people will see. They will see this Hello World message. They will see a sidebar and search and all of that stuff. A very plain design, but we can make a very complex design, as I've shown for clients. But this is the front end. This is what the user sees. If we had victor.com for real and someone visited, this is what they would see. I want to get back to the dashboard same button. If you hover over the name of your site, you get a bunch of options, but the one is dashboard. So you're going to get used to when I say, let's go to the back end. That means go to the dashboard. When I say visit site, that means go back to the front end. So you need to get used to back and forth between them. So I'm in the dashboard. You could also do this. When you hover over Visit Site, this time right-click it and select Open a New Tab or Window. You can have both open. You can have one window for your dashboard and one window for the front end. That way you don't have to switch back and forth. So I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm going to right-click Open a New Tab. So now I've got a tab with the dashboard and a tab with the front end. You can switch back and forth that way. I can also instead right-click New Window, and maybe I want it that way. Maybe I want to move one window off to the edge here and the other window there. So I can have the dashboard, the back end here, and the front end, <coughs> just drag the window to the edge. If you don't know this trick in Windows, you can grab a window and drag it all the way to the right, and then eventually it'll snap into place side by side. Question. So basically, you can just press the refresh, refresh button on the right screen as you're like changing things on your site. Yes. We're adding products, we're changing designs, whatever, and then on the front end, we just refresh it, and it shows up. It goes right away. So whatever way you want to handle it, probably most of the time I'll be doing it the manual way. I'll be doing visit site to, vi to visit the front end, and I'll go back to the dashboard just to make it obvious where I'm at. Whatever way you want to handle this, making two windows or two tabs or whatever is fine. But I'm going to be doing it this way where I'm jumping back and forth. And that's what we need to get used to. 
dashboard to edit the site and view our products and such, and then the visit site button to actually visit the site like a user. <coughs> In the dashboard here, I have various menu items at the left. We'll be looking at most of them. So the first one is dashboard, and we've got home and updates. On this home screen, at a glance, I'm seeing a bunch of information. Welcome to WordPress. Why not do these things? Just sort of just some intro content here. Okay, we'll get to that later. We've also got at a glance. I've got one post, one page, one comment. Oh, I just started my website and I've already got a comment. I'm famous. Well, we'll see what that is later, and we'll see what's the difference between a post and a page. We'll get to that. But this will tell me quickly also how many products do I have, pages, comments, etc. I can quickly create content under Quick Draft. I can see other activity. I've published this. I've, I've updated that, so I'll see content. I see WordPress news. WordPress is software that is constantly evolving, just like any of our software. If you've got a Windows computer, maybe you started with Windows 8, and now you've got Windows 10. If you've got a Mac, maybe you had Windows OS 10.10, uh, you know, .10, and now you've got 10.11. Software evolves. WordPress is software, and WordPress evolves. The current version available is version 4.4.2, and it's going to tell us that. We're not going to do any updates yet, and I have a discussion on updates later. We've got version 4.2.7, and it's telling me the latest one is 4.4.2. Later on, we'll talk about the pros and cons of updating. But this screen, like most screens in WordPress, are highly customizable. Because eventually when we add the shopping cart features, we're going to have some new boxes here. Sales for this month. Or, um, you know contacts from the clients so our screens can get a little cluttered so most screens have the ability for you to customize them look on the top right corner and you will see a tab that says screen options click screen options at the top right and it says the welcome screen is on and the WordPress news etc turn them all off what's happening when you turn those turn those check marks off all of these boxes are disappearing. I'm just showing you this because sometimes you don't always need to see a screen full of options. There's a lot of options to work with. You don't need them all, all the time. I hardly look at this WordPress news. I personally almost always turn it off. I don't need to see that. I'm focusing in my content, my website and such. And eventually, I'm going to get tired of it telling me, welcome to your new site. I'm going to turn that off eventually. What if I had clicked this dismiss button right here? Well, that's the same as turning off the check mark up on welcome. So however you want, you don't have to make any changes if you don't want. You can turn on and off these various screens. That's up on the screen options. And that might seem, well, that's customization, doesn't matter. That screen options matters a lot depending on the screen that you're in. There's so many options in WordPress that at a few times, some of the important options that I'm going to talk about are hidden. And they're going to be hidden under screen options because there's so many options. I'll point them out, of course. But I've customized my screen a little bit. You can even drag and drop. Do you see at the top of each little box here, you get the four-headed arrow? If you move your arrow at the top of a box, that means you can move it. So eventually when I get my sales figures, maybe I want to move it so that it's the first thing up here. So try that in a moment. Just drag these boxes around. Customization. <coughs> there isn't a way to reset them back to how they were. So that's okay because this doesn't really matter at the moment. But if you do min uh, rearrange everything at some point, there's no way to bring them back to the, to the defaults. Be aware of that, to my knowledge. So however you want to arrange that, that's fine. This is the first screen you're always going to see whenever you go back to localhost slash WordPress 
slash WP admin. Every WordPress site has this sort of structure. So if I had a real victordesigns.net, I would have slash WP dash admin. Every WordPress site by default has that. Um, that's actually a bit of a security vulnerability because if every WordPress site has that, I can try to hack into someone's WordPress site. The front door is always right there. That's one of the downsides of having WordPress that it is that it, that it exists in a server, that it's online like this. This is software I'm installing on the server. I need to log in to edit my site. There's always going to be a way for me to log in, and the default will be like that. Later on, we'll talk about that we can get more secure by changing our address to be something like victordesigns.net slash secret login do not click slash wp-admin.com. Later on, we can find that out. But by the default, we will all have this basic slash wp-admin. Let's um, jump down to... Notice we've got all of these menu items, and I'll explain what they are, but notice if you hover over a menu item, most of them pop open. If you hover over settings, you get a bunch of sub-settings. Go to settings, and then click on general. I'm in the dashboard, of course. Click on settings, go to general. If you misspell the name of your website, here's where you fix it. Victor's Bakery. Did you notice when you were looking at the front end, when you were on visit site, I had a subtitle, just another WordPress site. No, I'm not just another WordPress site, I'm the best WordPress site. So if I want to change that subtitle of my site, there it is, tagline. Let's take a moment to change that just for a bit of practice because this ties into other concepts for other classes, the concept of search engine optimization. Let's say we're building a great website, and unfortunately, it's not true. If you build it, they will not come. If you build it and advertise it, they will come. So what I'm getting at is search engine optimization is the art and the science and the magic of setting up your website to be found. You may have a great website, but if no one finds it, if no one can find it on Google search, on Bing search, on Yahoo search, whatever, is it really doing what you need it to do? Part of SEO is crafting our message at every opportunity. So if we leave this as just another WordPress site, mine and a thousand, ten thousand other websites also have that. So when someone is searching me, they might not find me because mine is not specific. Mine is not my own website. So here, and we would get to this deeper in the SEO class, I would write one sentence, one tagline. It's kind of misleading. Don't literally write a few words. Don't write, you know, keywords. You want a real sentence, one sentence that explains what your site is. If I've got a, a website that makes sense, Victor's Bakery, I could easily write, you know, the best bakery in San Diego. Sure. If I've got a site that's something more esoteric, like what the heck is a PMD Interactive? I don't know what they do based on that name. I better write a tagline that's something like web design and social media in San Diego. Right? I better write some tagline that explains what my company name is here if it's not self-explanatory. This is what's going to help you get found also when people search. If that's the case, that's one of the things you have to think hard about. I'm not saying write the perfect thing now, because this is just a testing site. It's not going to matter. <coughs> but thinking about it in the future, Victor's Bakery. Okay, it's obvious that my company is a bakery, but I want to tap into concepts of search engine optimization, SEO, by writing something like family-owned bakery in the heart of East Lake since 1989. That's a very dense tagline, but a very powerful one for SEO. I'm writing the keyword bakery, family, 
Eastleigh, 1989. These are things that people might search for. They might do a search, they might go on Google, Bing, Yahoo, whatever, they might do a search. Uh, you know, authentic bakery in Eastlake. I've hit two of those three keywords. I've hit bakery, I've hit Eastlake. Someone might be searching for family-friendly baked goods. You know, if I'm using some of these keywords, there's family. I hit one of the keywords that the person is searching for. That's the whole art and science and magic of SEO. What am I doing for my site to get found? And that's a whole other class. We're not going to do it a lot in this class. Take the other class. That's a big topic in and of itself, four weeks long. One thing I can say, I'm going to sprinkle in some SEO here and there. One thing I can say when you do this for real, think of a sentence that is human readable with your keywords that really explains your company and not a paragraph here. That's for other places. So a succinct sentence that explains your company. Don't worry about these two addresses here. Here's where you can change your email address if you want to change the administrator notifications. You're going to get notifications. Sold a new product. Out of stock new user, you're going to get notifications. You can change where those emails go to right there. WordPress built-in has the ability for people to create accounts. At the moment, mine is turned off. If I want people to create an account, I simply turn that on. That was very hard to do in the old days in Dreamweaver. It's still hard to do in Dreamweaver. And so with WordPress, you just turn it on and off. We do have to talk later on about the security implications of that. But you can easily turn on the ability to do membership. And it's a basic version. There's other ways to do more complex ones we'll talk about later. If a person creates an account, what kind of account, what kind of role? Subscribers fine, don't worry. We'll talk about it later. I'm not putting anyone can register yet, so just leave that alone. And um, I've got a time zone here, UTC-8, uh, UTC-0. Where in the world is UTC-0? Greenwich, mean time, in London. We're not in London, last time I checked. So we need to change our UTC offset. What's our UTC offset? Minus 8. Minus 8. Let's make it easy. Los Angeles. So our time zone is LA time zone. Instead of browsing and browsing and browsing all the cities of the world, did you see my trick? I just clicked the, I just clicked the box and started to type L-O-S, and it jumped to Los Angeles. I'm going to set this time zone because it may or may not matter, actually, but you usually want to set your time zone so that it's lined up with the time of your visitors. Uh, that is that let's say you are posting products and you're posting and you've got this at the wrong time uh, UTC 0 London times eight hours ahead so when it's 10 p.m. here it's 6 a.m. there uh, that may or may not matter to you but I'm gonna set the correct local time zone time format you can change that if you'd like I'll leave it alone date format time format I'm gonna leave those week starts out you can change that if you want it might not matter Oftentimes you've got Sunday as the start of the week, whatever you'd like. And what's the language of your site? It's English, or change it to whatever you want. Yes? When would the WordPress language be different from the site language? That would be if we're doing that advanced feature of obfuscating our login screen. So if we're going to have our login screen in a hidden folder, that's where we might change that. At. It's kind of advanced. I wouldn't change it right now. We would talk about it later. So here, if you make any changes, remember to click Save Changes. Any questions on this screen? You usually don't have to change these settings very much, but if you never change it, you might be in the wrong time zone. So we'll look at a couple of other settings here. I'm going to skip writing for the moment. Let's go to Reading. Under Settings here, click your Reading Settings. Now WordPress is very powerful. It started off 
as a blog focused website and it has evolved into a multi-purpose website. Let me show you what I mean. I've got an example here of one of my personal websites, one of my fun personal websites, vmcompost.com slash blog. So I write a blog. I'm into comic books. I go to Comic Con. I have a blog here about comics. I read and collect comics. And so I've got a blog where I write about that or make videos and such. This is a WordPress site. And this is running the default um, the default setup of WordPress, which is the blog format. A blog is a website that is updated on a regular basis with new articles. So on February 6th, I uploaded or I posted this article. Before then, I uploaded this one. November. Before that, I uploaded another one also November. Before that, okay, I have older posts, so I can go back. Before that, I did this one, and I did this one, and I did this one, and it goes on. So this is a classic blog. The latest blog post shows up first on the home page. The newest article, the newest post, goes first. This is what our current WordPress sites have as default. It assumes we're going to make a blog and we're going to add a new article. And the new article is going to show up first on the site. We can change it so that we get something like this. We get, this is another client of ours, another restaurant, um, an Italian food restaurant. This is also a WordPress site, but the home page doesn't have a blog. It has a slideshow to get you hungry, and it's got a phone number and all of that. There's no mention anywhere on the site of a blog, and then I can go to the menu and so forth. So this kind of site is also WordPress, but this is a static home page. There is no blog that takes over the home page. It's a home page that's static. Yes, this slideshow here is animating on its own, but that, that doesn't that doesn't count. It's that the home page doesn't change on a regular basis. This content here is always the same. I can change it whenever I want, of course, but it doesn't change every time we add something new. The default WordPress setup will change the home page every time you add something new. The other type of WordPress is a static home page. So those are two sides of the same coin. But actually, there's a third side. Of the coin. Is there a third side of the coin? Yeah, the edge. The edge of the coin, right? Um, this is the third side of the coin. This is a hybrid type of WordPress site. It has static content on the home page. You know, we change this stuff up once in a while, but it's mostly static, but there's still a blog. When there's a new blog post, that updates itself. So it's got both. It's got the blog content that updates whenever we add a new post, and it's got the static stuff. This hasn't changed in a while, and that's hybrid. That's in the middle. I'm saying that because in this reading, in this reading screen, this is where you set that. Front page of your, of your WordPress displays your latest posts. The default is that if I add a new article, it will replace the old one by default. If I want instead a static page, I can do that. We can't do it yet because this needs a little bit of setup. This asks you, okay, you want a static home page, great. What page will you show as the static home page that won't change? I would want a page called home page. I don't have a page called home page yet. I want to put all my posts in a blog screen. I don't have a blog screen yet, so I can't do this option yet. We'll be back to it a little bit later, but this is where we would set that. This is where we would switch between the two types of websites in the settings reading. The hybrid one is a little bit more advanced. We'll get to it later, but this is a mixture of the two, right? Static content dynamic content. There is no third option right here. We'll get to that later. So at the moment we will leave 
the default. We're going to have a, a classic blog kind of website. We'll change that a little bit later. That's one of the big questions people always ask me right away. I thought WordPress was only for blogs. Yeah, by default. But with a little bit of setup, we can do any kind of website. Um, these two items right here are based upon they matter if you're doing a blog. So did you notice that on my personal blog it showed a few articles and then it said next page right here. By default it's going to show 10 articles and then next page. You can change that to however many you want. The problem with having a higher number here, like 10, is that depending on the length of your blog post, you might have a really long home page, scrolling and scrolling and scrolling to get to page 2. So it's up to you if you want to change that. I'm going to leave these defaults, but keep that in mind. Too much content on your home page slows it down, and it uh, is annoying. It's too much content. I, I feel like I'm reading too much, or I'm seeing too much. For SEO purposes, is that bad? Good, good point. For SEO purposes, it's not so good. Way too much content. I'm not saying don't add content to your site, but I'm saying don't overwhelm people with so much content. So for SEO, I would recommend to cut it down a bit. Five for five or for three or such. Question? If you put it on a separate blog post, you'll still have that issue. If, if I send someone over to my blog, because my main site is vmcompass.com, and I send them to the blog, but if I still have that going on for 10 links, that might be still too much. So I would still cut it down, even if it's on its own page. What about, um, I've seen some sites where um, you can have several different things on one page, but then it, cut, it cuts off. So if you want to read more, you click read more. We'll see that. We'll see how to do that because by default it won't do that. By default your whole 500 words will show up. We'll see how to cut it down to the first 10 words, read more. Um, but we'll get to that. Uh, syndication, uh, syndication and for each article, those are related to if someone subscribes to your website. Um, people can subscribe to your website, they will get the article mailed to them, the latest post. That's very useful, uh, especially if you're doing blogging. Instead of relying on people to come back to my site, they can subscribe, they will get your latest blog on their mailbox. But you have to be careful. Are you going to send 10 of them at once? That's another one that I think is way too, it's way, it's way too, too much. Are you going to send 10 things to them? And also it said, it said you're going to send the whole article to them. A trick of SEO is bring people to your website as much as possible. Because at my website is where I'm actually going to sell them something, where I'm going to have them donate something, you know, money. If I send them the whole article, the full text of their email, they have little incentive to come back to my site. So I recommend, if you're going to do blogging, to put that as a summary, it's going to send a piece of the article, they're going to be interested in it, they're going to click read the whole thing and it'll come back to your site. Because at your site is where you're going to sell them something, give them something away, have them donate to your nonprofit, whatever. I believe when we set it up where we create that read more option, it'll take that part of read more. So that's much better than the whole article because I don't want a cluttered inbox and I want to bring them back to my site and that's how we entice them. A little piece and we'll come back to the site. And look at that, that's what we've got here, that search engine thing. It's kind of backwards. Discourage search engines from indexing. So basically, turn it on to hide yourself from the search engines, turn it off to be found by the search engine. It's kind of backwards, like when we vote, right? It says, uh, a vote yes on this will be no, don't fund that. You know, that always happens. So here it's kind of backwards. 
At the moment, we'll leave it on yes. Hide me from the search engines. I'm not a real site. Don't find me. But eventually, when we put our site live, we do want to get found, so we'll turn it off. Save that. Any questions on this screen? Under settings, um, let's look at one more. We'll look at discussion. This is another great thing that comes built into WordPress that was very hard to do in the old days. Um, a client would want the ability for people to have their users comment on their website. They would post something, uh, a blog post, a product, whatever, and they wanted people to comment. That was hard to do. WordPress comes built in with that. A bunch of options here, but we'll talk about the important ones. Um, let me jump down. Do you see here default article settings? Allow people to post comments on new articles. It's on. So at the moment, we have the ability for anyone to write anything on our on our on our website. I write a brand new article about the benefits of my, you know, my health uh, food or whatever. Someone can write a comment and say how it really helped them, testimonials, whatever. I write a brand new uh, blog post about, you know, whatever my opinions, and someone can can comment. I add a new product, people can add a comment. So if any person can add any comment, any crazy person can add any crazy comment. So the default is anyone can add any comment. You may or may not want that. Maybe you don't want comments at all on your site. Well, you can turn it off. Easy. Maybe you do want comments. But how do I deal with the crazies? We have the option scrolling down. Before a comment appears, comment must be manually approved. If you turn that one on, any crazy person can write any crazy thing, and then you will get an email It'll give you a preview of the comment. And right on the email, it'll say, approve, deny, spam. And from your email, you click spam, and it doesn't show up. So comments might be useful for various reasons, even SEO reasons. There's no right or wrong to use comments or not. But if you do want people to comment on your site, I highly recommend you turn on that approval. It is an extra step, and if you've got a popular site, you're going to have an inbox full of comments that you need to approve. Yes, it's an extra step, but it could be valuable to you because that's community. That's building you traffic, word of mouth, and such. And you can do it on a case-by-case -case basis. Notice it says, these settings may be overridden for individual articles. Let's say I totally turn off comments no more comments. But on, an, on, on a blog post two months from now, I do want comments just for that post. I'll show you how we can turn on comments just for that post. Or we can have this allowing all posts to get comments and on individual posts say no more comments on that post. In this top section here, I recommend to turn on the first option, attempt to notify any blogs linked to from the article, related also to allow link notifications from other blogs. In the SEO class, we talk about the importance of backlinks, which is basically a link from another website back to my website. The search engines see that, and the search engines value that, if some other website links to your website. There's a lot of nuances to that. We learn about it in the SEO class. But here, uh, I'm saying, yes, allow other websites to link to my website, basically. Um, let me know when another website links to my website. Why? Well, we talk about it in the SEO class. The opposite of that is, if my website links to another website, that's also good. And I turn this on so that my website lets the other website know we've linked to them. 
the purpose of that, as we talk about in the SEO class, is that once we make another website aware that we exist, we might get links back. Uh, so this could be useful for SEO, allowing links to my site and me linking to other sites. Getting traffic. These other settings here, comment, author must fill in name, that's good, users must register. That's optional. You can do whatever you want there. Do you want a person to first create an account before adding a comment? Yes or no? Uh, I'll talk about it later, but I'll leave the defaults. I'm going to leave all these defaults. Don't really worry about them just yet. Email me whenever anyone posts a comment. A comment is helpful for moderation. Yeah, I want to know when someone comments. Comment must be manually approved, etc. Comment moderation. When a comment contains any of these words, notify me. So let's say you're running a, a blog about, about cats and you don't want to hear anything about dogs on the site. So if you put in the keyword dog, then that comment will not show up. So you can do comment moderation that way. We've got comment moderation and comment blacklist. The regular moderation is you will get notified that a, that a message has been added to your site with, a, with an iffy keyword. And the blacklist is that simply these will automatically get spammed. If someone is writing something with this keyword, it automatically goes away. But be careful, and I don't quite like this, because... Um, if you use the keyword press, it will also hit the keyword WordPress. So I think that's way too powerful. So, you know, let's say you put in the keywords here, press. Anything that has a variation of that word will be, will be held for moderation, will be blacklisted. So I think this is not the way to do it. We've got other ways to do it we'll talk about later. Don't worry about all this avatar stuff. Defaults are fine. Just click Save. We made a couple of quick changes. Any questions on this screen? There are other settings to talk about. We'll get back to them. We'll do a couple more quick things and we'll wrap it up for the day. Let's go back to the front end. Let's go back to Visit Site. The default that we have here is the blog layout. This blog post was added, and it was the very first one. If I add a new blog post, it will push that one down. Um, if we go back to the dashboard, we have posts and we have pages. This is always a confusion for beginners. WordPress calls them both articles. A post is an article, a page is an article, even though most often you would think of an article as a post. So what's going on here is a post is related to the blog posts, is related to something new, a new article, a new update, a new, you know, a, a new um, essay, whatever. Something new that you've added to the site. Blog posts are something you add to your site on a regular basis. Once a month, once a week, once a quarter once a day, whatever. It's like a new news item, a new post, a new blog. It's something latest, a post related to the blog. Pages are screens of your website that don't change much. The about page, the contact page, the um, you know, follow us on Twitter page. A page that's not going to change too much. You're not going to change that about me page that often, or maybe that resume page. So a page would work best for screens that don't change much. And posts work best for screens that do change. Your blogs, your blog posts. So I'm going to show you the example again of the client. There is a home page, this is the home page, 
there is an there is a main menu page obviously the menu changes once in a while but <coughs> this has got this one at the moment we've got this contact page this doesn't change that often these are pages then we've got the blog this was added recently before that before that before that so these are posts posts are for blogs pages are for static screens of your website we're going to be working with both Before we wrap up with the day, we're going to create a post right now. If you hover over posts, you'll have a button that says All Posts, Add New, Post, Post Categories, Post Tags. We'll talk about those things in detail, but for the moment, hover over Posts and click All Posts. I'm sorry. Uh, add new. Hover, hover over posts and then click add new. I want a new post. You get the WordPress the WordPress post editor, title, content, and a bunch of options which we'll look at. But here for example, for the client, there's a new article. What are Chapulinas? And then a picture, some text, read more. There's another one called Hashtag TasteLA 2015. Picture text, read more. I want to read more. I click that. And then it goes on to the full article. More text, more pictures, the full article. I've got that. I've got this blog post. And that's what this is letting me craft at this point. If you get this pop up about distraction free, just click dismiss. But it's asking here for a blog post title. And what's the content of the of your article. Let's just say up here, because this is our, our testing site and we can delete it or change it later. We will just say first day of WordPress 1. That's the title of our article, the title of our blog post. Type it and then click in the editor right here. I clicked here and did you notice something appeared up here? Permalink. That's the actual web address of your article. Mine says localhost slash wordpress slash index slash 2016 slash 02 slash 10 slash first day of wordpress 1. So in a modern software like this, it automatically creates an address for you. You don't have to create files and save files and all of that. This does it for you. And we can edit this. There's an edit button there. I don't need to edit it at the moment, and I'll talk about a more a properly crafted address for SEO later, but I'm just showing that whatever title you type there will add itself to the address. And now we can type over here. Notice we have this editor with a few basic editing tools. Make text bold, give me bullet points, alignments and such. Kind of basic. But the very last icon is the toolbar toggle. So in your editor row right here, click toolbar toggle. You get a couple more editing features. Not so many, but changing the size of the text, for example, right there justifying it, changing text colors, copying and pasting. There's my undo. Undo and redo and help. So again, not a very complex editor. So in the beginning, people think, well, <coughs> WordPress is very limiting. How can I do columns? And how can I put text here and wrap text around it? By default, it's not that powerful. Uh, we will talk about plugins and such. To give us more features. Plugins are mini apps that give us more features. Because out of the box, WordPress is really, really powerful, but it doesn't have every feature. 
Because if I had every feature, it would be a very slow, cumbersome site. And not everyone needs every feature. We can add more features through plugins. For example, there's nothing over here anywhere about products. Shopping cart. It doesn't come in built in with a shopping cart. We're going to add a shopping cart plugin to give us that feature. We can add a plugin to give us the ability to make columns and complex layouts and such. But for the moment, we've got a basic editor. Let's write February 10th, 2016. Today I learned, and whatever you want, just a little practice, write some stuff, change the font, put some bullet points, doesn't matter. We're going to get more detailed later. Just play with those little editing tools there for a quick moment, and then we'll go on. This is the basic thing that we're going to do in WordPress over and over. Creating a post, or creating an, a page, or creating a product, etc., etc. And we're going to use this editor over and over and over. something really quick, and then we'll go on. We have the ability to add pictures and video and sound. We've got add media. We'll do that next time. But we can add a picture, we can add a video, we can add a PowerPoint, all of this stuff. We can add links. I've got the link tag up there. Let's say I'm writing, I'm writing a lot. Notice at the bottom it's telling me a word count. So I'm writing and I'm writing. And then um, this gets us to the issue, like I said, about um, that at a certain point you've written a lot and it's just going to be a long um, block of text. Let's say I write a little bit. I only want this part to be visible. I only want this part to be visible to, to visitors, and then I want read more. Then they can read the, more of this. The way we do that, you type some content, you put your cursor where you want that read more to appear, and then you've got a button right up there. To me, it looks like a little, like, you know, the line in the middle of the road. That's the insert read more tab that breaks your article into one little teaser section and then automatically read more and then a link to the rest of the article. It's the second to last icon on the first row. You click on that and then it'll mark something here, read more, or just more. Later on, we'll talk about what are these formats mean, what are categories and tags, etc. They'll make more sense to us when we're talking about products and such. But there's a bunch of other things, tags, featured image. Just going to write something basic here, write a little text, doesn't matter what. And then I'm adding the more tag. And the thing about WordPress is, if this was a real site, victor.com, as soon as I click Publish, Everyone in the world could see it. I have a draft. Maybe I'm working on this and I don't want everyone to see it yet. So I can click draft. I'm going to click draft anyway. And so this is saved as a draft. No one's going to see it yet. Let's say I've written something great or not. Move it to the trash. But um, I'll publish it. At the top right corner, click Publish. The status of this item has been published. It's visible to the public, and it was published on this day and time. Notice all of this is editable. I've been in the dashboard. I see what it looks like as the, the administrator. 
how does this look like as a for the regular users? Go back to visit site. First day of WordPress one. It's got the preview text. Continue reading. If I click continue reading, there's the rest of the article. Leave a reply. Built in. Next article, hello world. All of that's built in without me having to struggle to set this up in, in, in classic web design software. When I'm in the dashboard and I'm looking at any screen, usually I'll have a quick way to edit that again. Maybe I want to go back and make more changes. I'm just showing here, this is our workflow. We edit things in the dashboard, we create things in the dashboard, and then we visit site to see what it looks like for people. But it's live. It's basically always on if this was a real website. It's on our WAMP server or on MAMP if you're on the Mac. It's not real for the internet to, to browse. No one can see this website except you sitting in front of your computer. The edit post at the very top? You have to publish it first and then you have and then you've got at the top edit post. So we still have many more things to learn. We're going to wrap up the day at this point. Um, I recommend you try to follow sheets one and two at home, just to just to keep learning this, because obviously I make it look so easy. And I'm here, and I help you out, and it's so easy. Then you try it at home, and it's not so easy. So try it at home. Follow the instructions as best as possible. Send me an email if it doesn't work. I'll try to help by email. But bring your laptop. Maybe we can figure it out during lab time. Usually we will have the 30 minutes at the end of the day. Um, because this stuff, again, could be complicated, could be difficult. I'm recording it all. I've got notes. You can play the videos again as many times as you want. And I have to ask again, are you sure you want to become the next Amazon? Because then now you have to manage all of this. Maybe you're not going to have a blog, but you're going to need to create products and deal with inventory and taxes and shipping and everything. And I'm not trying to scare you away. I don't want you to leave the class. I don't want it to get canceled. But I'm telling you that you're going to have to deal with a lot of things now. Not only your business, but running your website. And I've got several people, hundreds of people that have come through my classes with different skill levels. And they all, they all get through it. They all learn something valuable. They all make an e-commerce website. Or decide, I'm going to pay GoDaddy to do it. And I'm fine paying $300 a year. That's peace of mind for me to work, where I'm just going to sell my products and I'm going to make that back in one sale. But if you don't want to invest some of those prices, you're going to need to do it yourself, but you're going to need to be a little bit more advanced um, doing it something like this. So when we come back, we will need to set ourselves up one more time. This, All of this hard work we've done so far, we're going to lose it, and that's okay we're going to do it again next time and then next time we're going to save our work and take it with us and no it doesn't work for you to simply copy the folder it doesn't work to simply copy this folder of WAMP to your flash drive first of all it's a huge folder half a gigabyte second it doesn't work to just copy you know your WordPress folder it's not complete it doesn't come with your database it's elsewhere so uh, we're going to lose our work this time. We're going to do it again next time. But next time, we're going to take our work with us. And that's a process we have to do. We're going to wrap up the main lecture here, have a little bit of lab time. I do have to close exactly at 4 because i got to beat traffic back down to Chula Vista. So any general questions? Yes. OK, general, any general questions? OK, so thank you for coming. We'll have a little lab time. We'll do it again next time.